Welcome one on one. I'm Steve Adubato. It is an honor to uh, welcome one of the funniest guys. Forget about New Jersey. Forget about the metropolitan area. One of the funniest guys in the country. Rich Voss is a comedian, uh, entertainer, and uh, I want to thank you for joining us. We appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. This is a beautiful. Look at this. This is a. Uh, did I overdress? No. Okay. You did not. You look absolutely <laughs> great. Um, by the way, by way of background, um, how long have you been in comedy? I guess here's the deal. I'm sober 30 years sober. Mm. So, and I think I partied for like two or three years doing comedy, but I I stunk. I mean, you can't, how good could you be? Whether you're sober or not, your first three years, you can't be good at anything. Right. So I've been doing it for like, I say 33 years, but Grew really 30. Rich, where'd you grow up? Plainfield, Plainfield, New Jersey. Plainfield. And growing up in Plainfield, were you involved in school plays? Were you, was it comedy? What was it? In, I, think, uh, I don't think I went to school. I was involved. Get out of here. Cut I, the crap. I remember when I was in English, I was in, I think, math class, and I asked to go to the bathroom. He gave me a pass. And he I, meaning the teacher. The teacher, and I never came back. Uh, I quit school, and I started my own business. I used to remodel houses. I had a big business, big. I mean, Victorian. Made money. I had seven guys working for me wow. when I was 20 years old, and this is in, like, in 76, 77. You know, I was paying them $9 an hour back then, seven, and I had the biggest business, but I partied, and I ruined my business, and, you know, years of partying or whatever. I thought everything was a party. Mm. And then eventually you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. I started comedy, and then my life turned around when I got clean. And you worked hard at it. And, yeah. and was it for, for most of us who got to see you on Last Comic Standing, was that it? What do you mean? For a lot of us who got to see you for the first time, was that? No, I mean, that, that was a great, it was a great But you were doing things before that. I was doing, I did tons of TV before that. Yeah. But that was network. And it was, you know, I, I to tell you the truth, I don't even really talk about it now. I mean, it was at the time, it was a great outlet and a great venue. Because one, sure. it was the first year, so it was new. I stood out, you know, sure the did. guy from Jersey, you know, the... the big personality. Yeah, big, you know. I, you know. So uh, it, it did bring my uh, notoriety up. It did raise, obviously, in the clubs, theaters, or whatever. But since then, you know, we've done so much. And, and I, don't, I don't regret doing it. I loved, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad because I remember I wasn't gonna. I, I was gonna because I was on a show called Tough Crowd at the That's time. Right. I was on Tough Crowd. I was doing a radio show. Two guys in New York who were always in trouble. I was doing Opie and Anthony on a regular basis. So I had a lot of stuff going on. And I go, I don't know if I'm gonna do a reality, mm. you know, because I it was kind of new reality. Totally new. And then, and my daughters were like, oh, you know, you know, and I was scared. So, you know, I was gonna embarrass my family. And the next, I, and it was if I didn't do it, it would have been the worst move. Because it, it, it took me from here to here, and then that's how I met my wife, too. You want to talk about Bonnie? Yeah. Actually, Bonnie was with us in Lincoln Center. Bonnie McFarlane? Yes. And where'd you meet her? Well, I was at the Comedy Cellar. I was performing in New York at the Comedy Cellar. Oh, hold on. I was just told by the producer she's going to tell the story. Oh, okay. On video. Is that okay with you? Yeah, go ahead. Because I know you have... By the way, what's the name of the podcast? Uh, my Wife Hates Me. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't. But we're going to take a look at this right, right now, Bonnie. We'll come right back to Bridge. <laughs> The story of the two of you meeting. Yes. We well, were at the out. Comedy Cellar, and I went down to meet him. I'd never met him before. I'd seen him on the show. He's legendary. How did you not know him? I, just, I knew who he was. I, I, um, I saw him on Last Comic Standing. I didn't like him on the show at all. I thought he was a jerk, as everyone did. Uh, I was not the only one. And uh, then, uh, but, I, but I was meeting everyone on the show, so I went down, and I met him. And uh, He was not a jerk when you met him. Well, he said, I, he said, you're that comedian girl, which I was flattered that he knew who I was and then, or at least knew that I was a comedian. And then he said, I'd hit on you, but I'm on a date. And then he... <laughs> he was a jerk. That, you know, my I'm, heart went I'm not saying you are a jerk. I mean, but that was a, was he, but he was being funny. Well, he's, that's his persona. Was he actually yeah. on a date? He actually was on a oh, date. I'm sorry. I'm yes, sorry. And, I, uh, that's a good line, though. I, 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 was on, I was on a date with a hairdresser from The View. And she won two Emmys for hair. For her hair. I'm going, I'm, listen, I, you know. But then the next day, I called the comedy seller. The lady that books the comedy seller, Esty, I said, Esty, can you give me that girl's phone number? Bonnie. Bonnie, yeah. I go, can you give me Bonnie? And so 
Uh, I left a message. So Esty calls Bonnie and says, Rick Foss wants your number. And Bonnie said, by no means give him my number. So <laughs> he didn't give me it. So I, I went back to the cellar the next night, hoping, and, and she was there, and we went out for pizza, and now I have an eight-year-old. That's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you, when I first met Bonnie, like, it was so, when we first met, okay, doing Tough Crowd, Last Comic Standing, then she was on season two, I was right. on one. Uh, uh, I was writing for the Oscars at the time. I went like that, like people don't know what writing exactly. is. Exactly. What do I stink? And <laughs> no, you don't. I had this Oscar gift basket. Right. I mean, trips. Great this, stuff. I mean, going everywhere. We're dating, we got TV shows, pilots, uh, selling out theaters, Oscar gift basket, right? Okay, so now, cut to now, TV show's not picked up, Oscar basket runs out, Tough Crowd is canceled, <laughs> and I have an eight-year-old. It's beautiful. No, but come on. I, I, I wouldn't try my life in. But you got to tell us a little bit more about, there's a radio show on Sirius. Yes. Of the same name? My Wife Hates Me. And where does the name come from again? Uh, Bonnie came up with it, I would imagine, yes. What do you mean you would well, imagine? No, I know for <laughs> you approved it. I love it, because it's... It, we, we, look, we have separate careers, but we have a brand, too, her and I. When we, do, we did a live show last night in New York at the Village Underground, sold out. So people come to see us together. Like, they'll listen. my ex-wife called me and said, I listen to your podcast. I can't listen anymore because I feel like I'm eavesdropping on you, too. Because the radio show, which is different, you know, in series, where we take calls, have guests, the podcast we do in our dining room, and it can get heated at times. You know, we just, What do you deal with? Real uh, life? Yeah, it's basically being married is uh, my wife. I've done at, it twice, I know. Yeah, my <laughs> wife at the end of the night gives me a lecture at the end of the bed of what I did wrong that day. That's not it. <laughs> yes. You're making that. You do stick on No, me. I'm not. You call, I'll call her right now. <laughs> I'll call her right now. She won't answer the phone. I don't know why she has a Good. cell phone. But she gives me a, a lecture. Not I would every say the night. same thing about my wife, but go ahead. Yeah. But she tells you what you did wrong. She like? Said, how... She, look, females think they have to change their their mate. Look, a female, when you go buy a new car, you don't take it home and go, oh, I'm going to try to turn this into a helicopter, okay? This is who she met. I, I'm old. You can't. This is it. This is the package. Yeah. So, you know, she's, the last week she goes, I'm going to write a list of 10 things. All you have to do is two of them. Did you get the pick? She didn't write the list yet. <laughs> so, so, but two more things, two things to make our relationship better. The thing is with Bonnie and I is, we, you know, if we have an argument, well, it'll be a blowout, but we'll, we'll, we'll let it go and then move on. Although one time she, she didn't talk to me for like four days hardly, and I, and I was telling people, I was going, our, could our relationship be any better? Look at it, we're not fighting. She goes, <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking to you because I'm mad at you, stupid. <laughs> yeah, but you guys do have a great relationship. Oh, she's the best. She's brilliant, she's beautiful, she's, she's brilliant. Talented, yeah. you know. Uh, she wrote a book that I'm almost done with. She's great. I'm <laughs> yeah, we had her. We talked about the book. By the way, real quick, I want to ask you uh, this: the podcast, radio, or it doesn't have to be or, or on stage, and a fan or. What do you love the most? Being on stage, by far, uh, hands down. Uh, I'm a stand-up. You know, I, that's what I do. I am a stand-up comic. I've been doing it for years. I loved. I'll do it. In, in front of 20 people, in front of 20,000. I don't, that's my, you know, people go, well, you don't act. Well, I'm a, I'm a stand-up. You don't go to a brain surgeon, you don't do root canal. Yes, I have acted, but my passion, I love doing stand-up. I love creating, I love coming up, I'm, you know, I'm working on my fifth CD, I'm gonna tape it uh, in a month. So, you know, you have, in, in the business we're in, you know, you have agents, manager, club owners that come and go, but no one, no one can take away your creativity. Mm. They can say, no, you can't work my club, or yes, you can, or this, that, but they cannot take away your creativity. And once you stop creating, then you're, you know what I mean? Then you're done. So you keep writing. You love what you do, man. I love and, it. I uh, keep doing what you're doing. We put up Rich's information during the uh, segments of people. Who, I looked at some of the video. It is great stuff. Thank Check you. out the podcast. And also on Sirius. Sirius XM, Tuesday night, 7 to 9. Uh, and, and the podcast, anytime. Podcast is on iTunes. My wife hates me, and you know uh, we're Thank all you. over. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. This is Rich Foss is a great comedian and uh, a terrific, funny guy, and he puts it all out there. And uh, catch him with Bonnie, but also catch him on his own. Yeah. Stay with us one on one. We'll be right back right after this. 
One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, MagnaCare, New Jersey City University, Investors Bank, NJM, NJ Best, and by ShopRite Supermarkets. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.